this is being recorded directly to my hard drive now, so I guess it's time to do this. Pounded in the butt by the handsome sentient manifestation of my Twitch stream from two-type Hugo Award finalist Chuck Tingle. Life has a way of lulling you into a routine, allowing the moments of your daily grind to blend together until eventually they just seem like one long, endless journey where nothing ever happens. You wake up, you go to work, you have a few hours at the end of the day for yourself and your friends and then you sleep until the whole process starts over again. As crazy as it sounds, I don't actually mind all that much. On paper, this kind of life sounds dystopian and awful. Something that was something that was designed by an out-of-control computer system rather than a living, breathing human. But it's also quite comforting to know where you'll be on most days. That is, until the rug gets pulled out from under you and you land flat on your face, metaphorically speaking. That's how I feel as I stare at my boss, who's trying his best to put on an expression. An expression, someone who wants to get this nasty process over with and move on to the next task, like a good worker drone. Can you ever do this? I question. Still not quite sure I heard my boss correctly as he stands before me, leaning over the edge of my cubicle. Yeah, I'm afraid so, my boss Mr. Bolson, Bolsoon offers in return. His lips curl down to an overly exaggerated frown. When you signed on with us, it was very clear in the fine print that we could fire you at will. <laughs> that hits a bit too close. And that was like six years ago. I ref that was six years ago, I reply. Not that this is any kind of argument in my defence, but more as an acknowledgement to myself. I'm still in utter shock, reeling from the fact that my entire life has been upended with two simple words. You're fired. You've got until the end of the day to get your stuff packed up and out of here, Bolson continues, as though he's offering me a favour, then glances at his watch, which means you've got a little less than an hour. But you can't fire me for no reason, I stammer. Bolson leans in closer. Hey, between you and me, I think it's ridiculous too, he offers, clearly lying for his teeth. There's nothing I can do, though. The guys upstairs need their bonuses. Isn't your office upstairs, I question? Mr. Bolson simply ignores this, rapping twice on the wall of my cubicle before strolling away. Thanks for understanding. He calls back over his shoulder. Thanks for understanding, he calls back over his shoulder. The next thing I know is I'm left sitting with a heavy blanket of loneliness weighing down upon my soul. All around me, keyboards continue to clatter away, and my co-workers talk loudly on the headsets, but somehow I feel as though I'm surrounded by my own personal bubble of silence and stillness. Suddenly, that stillness is broken as my friend and co-worker, Ribble, pokes his head out from the wall behind me, causing me to jump in surprise. Hey, Taco. I'm so glad I saw that soundbite before it came through. I would have been so fucking confused. God, it's good whiskey. But I was questioning it. It's Jack Daniels. <laughs> hey, Taco. Sorry about the whole getting fired thing. That really sucks, man. My friend states. I nod. Thanks. It Thanks. I think I'm still kind of processing the whole thing. What are you going to do now? My friend continues. I shrug. I don't really know. I mean, I've got to pay my rent, right? Sure, sure. Ribble responds with a nod. Maybe this time you can find a job that you actually like. Though, hell if I... I hell, I would if I could. You could, I reminded Ribble. You could quite... You could quit... You could quite today if you wanted to. Like my friend waves this away. No chance. I need the paycheck. I roll my eyes at this lack of recognition for this philosophical double standard. But I'm not mad. I like my friend. And his heart is in the right place. Honestly, more than anything, I'm just going to miss him. I revel in this moment for a bit, but it doesn't last long before the looming financial dread starts creeping back in. The anxiety begins pumping its way from my bloodstream, filling my veins with toxic fear, despite my best attempts at pushing it back out. You're going to be okay, Ribble assures me, noticing the pain look on my face. There's all kinds of jobs for you can do. Nobody's hiring around here right now, I counter. I've got a buddy who's been looking for months. Well, what about working for yourself, Ribble continues? It's a gig economy. It's a gig economy, man. You can drive people around and have them pay you for an app. I hate driving, I inform him. I guess it's better than an office like this, but can you imagine sitting in traffic all day? What about walking dogs, Ribble questions? There's an app for that too. I'm more of a cat person, I counter. My friend thinks on this for a moment, determined not to give up on me. Suddenly, he snaps his fingers loudly in an exaggerated eureka moment. I know, video games. I just stare at Ribble blankly, trying to determine whether or not my friend has completely lost his mind. What? I question. Video games, Ribble repeated, consumed by, consumed by wild-eyed excitement. 
Haven't you ever heard of Twitch? It's a website. It's a website where you can stream stuff online. Mostly video games, but I think you can do pretty much whatever you want. As it's being proved. And people pay you for it, I question? If you're good, it will explain all funny. I'm never, I'm neither, I remind him. But I guess it's worth a shot. Oh, Ribble smiles and for a moment. I also grin as I'm blessed with the slightest glimmer of hope for my future. Maybe I really can strike out on my own and make a name for myself. Concepts. Make a name for myself. That's a very strange format. Concepts I'll be reading for book while. Now on my street. What the fuck? Make a name for myself. Um. Where's page four? Page four died. What do you mean page four died? It's a paid DLC. I paid for the book. Okay. For myself. I've been reading his book for a while now on my streams and everyone seems to love it. All right, guys and girls, I announced pounding the microphone. I've got my setup on, on my desk, a webcam trained directly at my face as I speak. It's that time again. Let's dive deep into the tingle verse and read some scorching hot Chuck Tingle stories. Across the chat screen, I begin seeing words of encouragement appear. The text shooting. Oh. Upwards of a long scroll as more and more viewers jump into the conversation. This seems inc incredibly relevant, like what's happening right now. I haven't picked out a book yet, so let's check out Chuck Tingle's website and download the latest Tingler, shall we? I begin clicking into a new tab in my browser and then pounding out the address for Chuck's official site. There's a brief hesitation as my page loads, then moments later an image of Chuck's latest creation appears before me in all of its glory. There's so many spelling mistakes in this! Glor- Shopping- For- appears before me in all of its glory, stopping me in my tracks. The second that I see this book cover, I get the distinct impression something strange is going on. But I'm also not one to get riled up over occurrences that can easily be explained away by coincidence. I take a deep breath, collecting myself. It looked like Chuck Ting latest Tingler is called Pounded in the Butt by the Handsome Sentient Manifestation of My Twitch Stream. Immediately, the chat erupts with a flurry of activity. Some users insisting that I'm making this all up while others run off to check the website for themselves and reporting back that this is, in fact, the title of Chuck Tingle's newest short story. I click a link and download this ebook directly to my tablet for a better reading experience, then pull it up on screen, clearing my throat. Life has a way of lulling you into a routine, allowing the moments of your daily grind to blend together until eventually they just seem like one endless journey where nothing ever happens, I read aloud. You wake up, you go to work, you have a few hours at the end of the day for yourself and your friends, and then you sleep until the whole process starts over. At this point, I'm forced to pause, my eyes narrowing a bit as I skip ahead. The farther down the page I get, the more my heart starts to slam and harder and harder in my chest. I've got a distinct suspicion that this book was written specifically for me, and me alone. And as the words cascade across my brain, I realise that the story unfolding is clearly about me quitting my job and starting this very Twitch channel. What the fuck? Is all that I can manage to say, the words falling limply out of my mouth as I stare at the screen before me. The chat on my computer is filling up with similar words of confusion. People, people wondering what the hell I'm doing just staring off into space. I'm sorry, everybody. I finally stammer. I think this book is about me. I continue to scan ahead, jumping in at a random section of text and reading aloud. At this point, I'm forced to pause my eyes, narrowing a bit as I skip ahead the further down the page I get. The more my heart starts to slam harder and harder within my chest. I've got the distinct suspicion that this book is written specifically for me and me alone. And as the words cascade across my brain, I realise that the story unfolding is clearly about me quitting my job and starting this very Twitch channel. I suddenly realise that my own reality and the reality of this bizarre book are seconds away from meeting. This is literally happening right now, I read aloud. Like I'm reading these words, but I'm also not, because I'm trying to explain this is happening in the book. This isn't me explaining these are words on the page. Suddenly overwhelmed with existential panic, I toss my tablet to the side of a loud clatter. Pushing away from my desk and leaning back in my chair. What is happening, I groan aloud, holding my head in my hands. 
I take a deep breath and then let it out, let it out slowly, trying as hard as I can to collect myself. My mind is racing with all these various possibilities, but nothing seems to add up. And the more I think about it, the more this panic begins to swell within me once again. Forget the reading, I announced glancing over at my shelf of videos. Let's play something. I think everyone wants to hear the story, a deep voice suddenly announces. <laughs> oh, this, Ince this is Inception in book form. So many layers, that's what. So that's the fourth and fifth sixth wall broken, I think. I think we're on the twelfth wall, mate. <laughs> Forget the reading of the video, let's play something. I think everyone wants to hear the story, a deep voice suddenly announces. I freeze in the chair, my blood running cold, as I slowly turn back towards my computer screen and realise that it's now attached to the handsome, muscular body of a man. The scream stands up, towering over me of his chiselled prowess. Hey there, the stranger figure offers. Not quite sure what else to do with myself, I muster up a feeble greeting in return. Hi, the muscular man with a computer for a head loudly laughs. You seem a little... <laughs> seem a little alarmed, but I assure thee, I assure you, we know each other quite well. I'm the sentient physical manifestation of your Twitch stream. My what? I stammer, still trying to understand what's happening to the fabric of reality around me. I'm your Twitch stream. The hulking figure repeats, it's all there in the book. I didn't get that far, I explain. Oh, I know, the computer-headed man offers. We're only about 2,000 words in, and there's still a whole other half of the story left. How do you know that? I stammer. Because the characters in a book, the sentient manifestation of my Twitch stream explains, I know whatever Chuck wants me to know, and the same goes for you. If we're characters in a book, then who's reading us, I question. Oh, all sorts of people, the living concept explained. We've got readers all over the world. A lot of people listening to a live reading on Twitch, too. I thought you said we were inside a book. I counter. Are you saying Twitch is real? No, no, no. Not this Twitch channel. The real one. Out there in the world for the readers. My computer-headed visitor explains with a laugh. He leans forward a bit, lowering his voice. Although between you and me, those people reading are characters in a book too. They just don't know that. <laughs> this is insane, I tell him. It's not insane, it's just a story. The sentient manifestation of my Twitch channel calmly counters. Oh. My brain. My brain. It's entertainment. Nothing to get riled up about. As nutty as it sounds, these words of encouragement actually kind of calm me down a bit. Although I'm still reading from the fact that the only reason I have any of these feelings is because some omnipresent author is trying, is typing them out for me. I try to center myself, searching for any balance I can find, despite the rather bizarre circumstances I've suddenly been thrust into. I never gave you my name, the sentient manifestation of my own Twitch channel finally offers. Extend his hand towards me. I'm Jorben Sheems. Jorben Sheems. Taco, I replied. So what happens now? What kind of book is this? Yorbin narrows his eyes with concern. I thought you read some already. I didn't get very far, I admit, and I certainly didn't skip into the future. Maybe you should take a peek, the sentient manifestation of my Twitch channel offers. Clearly aware of something that I'm not. Cautiously, I stand up and walk over to my table. Tablet. I'm picking up, picking up to small glowing screen and continue to read. I scroll forward a bit, selecting another random paragraph from the end of the book. I clear my throat and read aloud. Completely lost in a moment, I reach down between my legs and grab a hold of my swollen, hanging cock, beating myself off in time with Jorben's confident slams. I read aloud these two distinct sources of pleasure create a strange polyrhythm within my body. This powerful ache taking on a completely new form as the first hints of an earth-shattering orgasm rear their head. I finish the paragraph and set my tablet down. Finally, understanding what all of this is about. As a character in Chuck Tingle's novel, I'm here to get pounded in the butt. And this is the realisation. While startling at first fills while startling at first fills me with an incredible sense of purpose and relief. After all, what could be more entertaining for my Twitch stream than a real life meta pounding with this handsome sentient concept? I know why we're here, I stammer. I understand now, and I'm pretty fucking excited about it. Yorbin smiles. Me too. Suddenly, overwhelmed with lust, me and the handsome sentient manifestation of my Twitch stream rush together, kissing passionately as our bodies embrace. His head is his head is cold, 
and the surface of his screen is flat against my lips and tongue, but we make it work. The two of us frantically begin to tear off each other's clothes, tossing the fabric to the side as we reveal our nude bodies. Jorbin looks absolutely incredible, his perfectly sculpted form unlike anything I've ever seen. <sighs> the living concept's frame is, potentially mus is potently muscular, each and every piece of his body is his beautiful body chiseled to perfection. I want you so fucking bad, I gush. You got me, the sentient Twitch stream whispers in my ear, causing an eruption of this phrase to repeat over and over again through the chat. I reach down and let my hands drift slowly across the abs of this handsome living concept, teasing him for a moment as I hover above his, the border of his waist. Looks like Danny DeVito is enjoying this. Danny DeVito is definitely enjoying this. As I hover above the border of his waist, the tension builds and builds, but soon enough it's too much to bear, and I plunge below, wrapping my fingers tightly around Jorbin's swollen cock. Come on, Danny. You need to get in closer for this. The people want it. Get, get in here. No! Danny! The handsome Twitch stream lets out a long, satisfied groan. I just read the next paragraph, holy shit! The handsome Twitch stream lets out a long, satisfied groan. The moans appearing in a text through this chat room head in cascades of glowing letters. You like that, Iku? Before Jorbin has a chance to answer, I drop to my knees before him, opening my mouth wide and slipping his giant rod between my lips. I slowly begin to bob my, bob my head up and down his length and sensual movements, saving the taste of his enormous dick as I reach up and cradle the living concept's hanging balls. Faster and faster I move, finding a confident oral rhythm before switching things up entirely and popping his rod out of my mouth. I stick out my pink tongue and drag it across the bottom of Jorbin's shaft, starting at the balls then gradually arriving at the tip of his fleshy spear. Once here, I playfully hit the head of his shaft, does this break terms of service? I hope not. If not, it's going to go up on YouTube. <laughs> Grinning mischievously as I prepare for what's next. Seconds later, I take Jorbin's dick between my lips again. Only this time I refuse to pull back. Instead, my just, instead, my just continues pushing my face farther and farther down onto the living concept's length, relaxing as much as I can and somehow allowing Jorbin's cock to slide well past the limits of my gag reflex. I have an idea to make this better. Nope, not Dead by Daylight. There we go. Some sensual jazz in the background. <sighs> Grin mischievously as I prepare for what's next. Seconds later, I take Jorben's dick between my lips again. Only this time I refuse to pull back. Instead, my I just continue pushing my face farther and farther down to the living concept's length. I feel like I should get some candles, but <laughs> I'll light if you can. Yeah, I'll light if you can. As your room, all the candles in my room are in the opposite corner, and I'm too far into this to stop now. I find my face pressed hard against Jorben's perfectly toned abs. His cock swallowed to the hilt as I gaze up at him with lustful, watering eyes. The living Twitch stream places his hands against the back of my head and holds me here for a moment. Savouring his erotic position of domination while I submit myself completely. My partner's probably watching this right now, like, I hate this so much. We stay like this for as long as I can, as I, I can possibly manage, until I'm eventually forced to pull back in a sputtering, gasping mess. Saliva dangled between my wet lips and the head of Jorpin's cock. I need you inside me, I groan. I need you to pound me up the ass right fucking now. I fall back and turn around on the floor, popping my ass out towards Jorbin from the doggy style position. I wiggle my rump from side to side, playfully reaching back and giving my toned buns a playful slap. While I'm at it, I hold my cheeks open a bit, displaying the tightness of my puckered butthole to the hulking lover that stands behind me. 
This bliff, blissfully explicit moment gets a massive reaction from the chat room, who once again fills Jorbin's screen with words of shock, excitement, and encouragement. What are you waiting for, Aiku? Playfully. I playfully. Get over here and slam that handsome Twitch stream cock up my tight gay butthole. Jorbin doesn't need to be told twice, climbing down to position behind me and al aligning his enormous shaft with my anal tightness. He teases me for I'm going to need a lot more of this. He teases me for a moment, testing the tension of my butthole's rim and then pulling back with a sense of erotic glee. Do it, I demand. Pound me right fucking now. Finally, the handsome sentient twitch stream slams forward in one deep, powerful thrust. He is cock sliding into my anal depth as I start yelping and escapes from my throat. While I just finished talk taking Yorbin with my mouth, nothing could have prepared me for the girth of his rod as it stretches the limits of my asshole. Fuck, I cry out. That twitch stream cock is so fucking big in my tight butt. Fortunately, Yorbin is a patient lover, taking his time with me and allowing my body to adjust to his enormous size. The sentient concept moves slowly at first, pumping his hips with grace and care. The longer the two of us pulse like this, the more any feelings of discomfort begin to melt away, replaced instead by a powerful, overwhelming warmth that makes its way from the pit of my stomach to the tip of my fingers and toes. Soon enough, I'm quaking with pleasure. Eventually, Jorbin finds a confident rhythm within me, hammering away at my butthole while I enthusiastically moan and groan. The two of us lock into a flow of erotic movements, our bodies pulsing together as the pleasure begins to pass back and forth between us in an ever-escalating feedback loop. Every passing second allows these sens sensations to build, the feelings eventually manifesting themselves in a trembling quake that fills both of our bodies. Just like that, just like that, I begin to repeat over and over again under my breath, the words falling out of my lips in a blissful mantra. As Jorbin continues to hammer away at me, with every passing round, they grow louder and louder. Until eventually I'm screaming them at the top of my lungs. Just like that. Just like that. Completely lost in a moment, I reach down between my legs and grab a hold of my swollen hanging cock, beating myself off in time with Jorbin's confident slams. These two distinct sources of pleasure create a strange polyrhythm within my body. This powerful ache taking on a completely new form as the first hints of an earth-shattering orgasm rear their head. Jorbin doesn't let up for a second, our speed now elevated to a powerful jackhammer of kick. I push back against him as the handsome twitch stream plows into me, bracing myself on the floor as his fingers dig deep into the carpet below. My eyes roll back into my head as a long, satisfied cry erupts from my mouth, filling the room around us. I'm gonna come, I scream. I'm gonna blow this fucking load. Do it, my handsome living twitch stream demands. After hovering at the edge of climax for a brief moment, I finally push myself over the edge, a powerful cascade of sensation erupting through my body like an avalanche. It starts slowly at first, but soon enough these blissed out feelings are gaining momentum and sweeping me away, consuming me entirely. I throw my head back and let out one final glorious howl of pleasure as a hot white jizz erupts hard from the head of my cock, splattering out across the floor below me in a mess of beautiful milky patterns. Jorben is clearly operating on a similar timeline, and moments later, the muscular living concept removes itself from my butthole. The living twitch stream stands up over me, and as I position myself below him, I gaze up with eyes of cock-hungry lust, completely lost in the moment. Give me a spunk, I demand. I need that hot pearly cum all over my fucking face. Oh, fuck me. This is, this is a work of art. Jorben is furiously beating himself off now, and it's only a matter of seconds before this spunk is erupting into my open mouth in a rope, in rope after rope of warm cum. I catch as much of the seed as I can, swallowing hungrily before going back for more and repeating the. <laughs> Early, calm down. Oh, I need to have that auto mod to just censor and uncensor everything. Oh. I can make notes! I can make notes on this book and send it to my family. Page 12, we're getting there, boys. Oh my, I don't manage to catch between my lips 
Repeating, uh, the loads. I don't manage to catch between my lips, end up glazing my cheeks and chin, running down my face in the long white streaks, and then dangling in the air as glorious semi-translucent strands. When my handsome sentient Twitch stream finally finishes, he staggers back, collapsing onto the couch nearby in a state of utter exhaustion. That was amazing, I tell him, struggling to catch my breath. The viewers think so too, Jorbin offers in return. This is the biggest broadcast you've ever had. Wait, what? I stammer. I stand up and walk over to Jorbin, gazing into his glowing screen on the head. The chat room is absolutely overwhelmed with viewers, their text zooming by at speeds that are simply too fast to read. However, from what I can tell, they like what they see. Wow is, it, wow is all that I can say. And now we get to do it all over again, Jorbin proudly states through a smile from the top. I narrow my eyes quizzically. What do you mean? This is a short story, remember, Jorbin offers. It's going to be read over and over again. Friends will do live readings for each other. Hell, it will probably end up on another Twitch stream. That sounds a bit too mad, even for Chuck Encounter. The sentient concept shrugs. I will guess we'll have to find out. Some say that love is a soul of books, and what better way to show a little love than with a free gift? Here to tingle you to the court is a bonus story for your reading pleasure. Butt Night Battle Royale. <laughs> Oh my fucking god. Okay, I'm gonna need to drink this. I'm moving on to the strongbow. I need some I need to just keep this going. It's royal time. <laughs> but I but a royale. Wait. This is no longer essential. This is but night battle royale. Let's just have the Fortnite menu music playing in the background. <laughs> Butt night. Bottle Royale. The second my boss pulls up to the gas station, I know something is wrong. If there's one thing this guy loves to do, it's call me. Rattling off demands after catching me looking disinterested with a customer on his closed circuit camera. Or forgetting to lock the cash register when I close out for the night. When you own a gas station, it's easy enough to pick up the phone and call your employee to yell at them. But driving across town to do it in person is quite unusual. Turnter pulls up into the parking space and climbs out in a rush. Hustling over to the front door of the convenience mart and throwing it open with the chime of a loud jangling bell. Pete, you've got to take Riley's shift, my boss informs me bluntly. A statement rather than a question about my availability. I narrow my eyes. I'm out of here in 20 minutes, I reply. It's dinner time. I've got plans. Turn to shake his head. Sorry, that's not an option. You're taking Riley's shift if you want to keep your job. I stand in dumbfounded silence, not quite sure how to react to this outrageous demand. I'm not quite sure of the legality of my boss's actions, but either way, I don't really have the resources to do anything about it. It's not like I have the time or the money to take this guy to court over an unexpected extra shift. Where's Riley? I finally question. I don't get it. He one turn to retorts, his grim and demanding expression actually softening for a moment. There's a fleeting sparkle of pride that flashes behind Tanta's eyes, but the second it arrives, it quickly disappears again. That lunatic actually pulled it off. One what? I continue, utterly confused. Tanta narrows his eyes. You didn't know? That Tanta was completing in the butt night bottle royale. He's been off the calendar for two weeks. I just thought he was on vacation, I offer. What the hell is butt night? When Tanta realizes that I truly have no idea what he's talking about, he suddenly shifts gears. Don't you worry about that, he commands. I don't need another employee winning a million credits and running off without someone to cover their shift. Let's just say that Riley won't need to work for a very, very long time. Well, I can't work tonight either, I blurt. Tanta just stares at me, his expression ice cold and unflinching. Then don't come back. I take a deep breath and let it out slowly. I need this job to put food in my stomach and a roof over my head. But not in some abstract sense, but in a real way. I've got no family to speak of, and although my friends are wonderful, none of them are in a position to take care of me should I suddenly lose my own source of income. Alright, I'll stay. I'm sorry. I finally relent this time. However, Tanta's expression doesn't change. Instead, the scowl grows even more hardened than before, drilling a hole into the depths of my soul. I can tell that my boss's mind is different, is racing now. 
turning over a variety of different outcomes and consequences at lightning speed. I did not expect to be doing this today when I woke up. I expected to play playing fucking Pokemon. <laughs> Got my Switch up there with my save on with all of my Pokemon. <sighs> Finally, turn to Mix's decision. And it's one that I was definitely not expecting. You know what? Never mind. My boss states firmly, I only want employees who know their place. You're fired, Pete. My jaw drops. What? Collect your things and get out of here, my boss continues. I'll cover the rest of the evening and tomorrow morning. I'll have two new employees instead of one. You can't just do that, I stammer. Watch me, turn to replies, with a satisfied smirk. But I need the money, I continue, practically begging now. Turn to shrugs. Maybe you should sign up for butt night then. It worked out all right for Riley. Never in a million years will I have expected to be here in this flying bus high above a remote island off the coastline, but here I am. When Turner told me to sign up for the butt night, he didn't expect me to actually do it, but desperate time calls for desperate measures. To be honest, I'm in way over my head, but at least admission is free and the grand prize for the last man standing is not something to be scoffed at. Butt Night Battle Royale is a competition in which 100 contestants parachute down to a deserted island and participate in a free-for-all competition to decide which one of them is the most handsome. Those who are deemed less handsome over the course of several confrontations will be instantly teleported off the island, while the most handsome contestants will remain. Eventually, there will be only one contestant left. The official most handsome man looking around the fly this flying bus. The official most handsome man. Looking around this flying bus, I'm already starting to realise just how unlikely I am to win this thing. There are some absolutely gorgeous guys above this enormous floating party bus. And not just humans either. Scattered across the group are dinosaurs, unicorns, big feet, and even a few handsome living cars and motorcycles. Fortunately, items that can boost your handsomeness have been scattered across that whole island, just waiting to be discovered. With some quality equipment, I know that I'm certain to lose. So my strategy will be to disembark the bus well away from the others, finding a secluded area and then building up my handsomeness slowly with some fancy clothes and possibly a new haircut if, it, if I can find it. You look nervous, comes a deep, blowing voice from next to me. I glance over and see an incredibly muscular Bigfoot extending his hand, which I give a firm, confident shake. I am, I admit. Have you ever done this before? The Bigfoot nods, once or twice. What's your name? Pete, I inform him. I'm Renton Teambus. The handsome Bigfoot introduces himself. You got any tips, I question? The massive, muscular creature laughs. You know the second our feet hit the ground out there, you and me are going to be in direct competition with one another. He hesitates and shocks himself a bit, finally giving in. Alright, here's a freebie. When you jump out of the bus, don't pull your chute right away. Use momentum to head out towards the old airplane hangar in the west. When you land, don't aim for the ground. Just go right on top of the hangar. There'll be some very cute sunglasses hidden up there. Renton didn't have to say any of this, but the fact that he did warms my heart greatly. I'd already found the toned Bigfoot to be incredibly attractive on the outside, but now I realise that his insides is just as beautiful. See you around, Renton suddenly offers with a wink. The next thing I know, the massive Bigfoot has rolled to his left and opened up a hatch on the side of the bus, letting in a cold blast of air. The enormous creature springs forth from the flying vehicle, disappearing into the brilliant blue sky as he rockets towards the earth below. Immediately, other competitors begin to follow suit, lining up to make their jumps from either side of the bus. It's not long before only a handful of us are left, and it's only then I catch a glimpse of the airplane hangar. I was informed about far, far below. I step up on the edge of the bus's metal lip and watch the contestants spread out in the sky below me. They throw open their parachutes and fan wide across the island. My heart is slamming hard in my chest now. I'm not sure if I can make the leap. What other choice do you have? A voice in the back of my mind asks. This is it. I suddenly realise they need to win this contest. I take a deep breath and then jump from the bus, suddenly plummeting at incredible speed towards the ground. The sensation is so strange and terrifying that at first I completely forget what I'm doing. For the first few seconds of my fall, all I can consider is whether or not I'm going to die when I hit the ground. But as my descent continues, I somehow will myself to focus on the task at hand. My eyes lock onto the distant airplane hangar and I immediately realign with my body in the air, angling myself so that I'm soaring headfirst towards the structure. It comes on fast and the next thing I know is I'm ripping the cord of my parachute, slowing me down as I comfortably glide through the air. Just as Renton instruction, I landed on the roof of the hangar. I immediately cut away my chute and began to frantically search my surroundings. Looking for signs of a package or container where these mystical sunglasses could be located. 
I find nothing, and it's only then that I realise maybe Renton wasn't the nice guy I thought he was. I don't have long to dwell on the possibility, however, but I suddenly catch a glimpse of a figure running through the tall grass nearby, heading directly towards the hangar. Oh shit, I blurt immediately, dropping down behind the ledge of the roof so that I'm obscured from sight. I realise now that I'm a sitting deck up here. I would... It would be one thing if I discovered the cash or supply that was promised, but without any way to boost my handsomeness, my strategy is already looking like a terrible idea. I'm going to be the first one eliminated. Abruptly, my ears lock onto the faint sound of footsteps sprinting to through the hangar. Below me, I freeze holding my breath as I make myself as perfectly still as possible. The sprinting slows, then stops, then begins again. Hey! A voice cries out down below, causing me to jump in alarm. Fortunately, this explanation is not directed towards me. It appears now that two contestants have encountered one another, and now there is no doubt that one of them will remain on the island when the smoke clears. The following minute is filled with a cacophony of sounds, various displays of handsome dominance carried out in the form of struts, trots and twirls and confident swagger. Is that all you've got? Someone shouts mockingly. Or is this too hot for you to handle? Oh no, the rival replies. Oh no. Suddenly, silence yet again. Moments later, I can hear the explorer below continuing their search of the airplane hangar. Only now their footsteps are drawing even closer. It appears they found a set of stairs leading up to the roof, and now my panic eyes are drawn to the nearby door that just awaits to be opened by a gorgeous, muscular contestant. In one last moment of desperation, I stand up and begin to search for the sunglasses, compelled to hang on tightly to the last sliver of hope I've got. I notice the sunglasses sitting behind a vent as the door behind before me springs open. Out trots a handsome unicorn in a tight black vest. His broad shoulders and thick biceps flexed and ready to rumble in the afternoon sun. He starts marching towards me, confidently, looking handsome as ever. Immediately, I grab the sunglasses and throw them on. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I have to try something. So, with all the swagger I can muster, I begin strutting towards him, beautif beautiful sun towards the beautiful unicorn. The second this attacker sees my sunglasses, his whole demeanor changes, faltering slightly, and then then never quite getting back to where it started. Soon enough, this lack of confidence begins to snowball. The unicorn retreats a bit, hoping to turn away from my handsome approach, but it's too late. There's a sudden flash of blue light as the unicorn disappears, teleported off the island by my overwhelming handsomeness. My first victory. Moments later, a loud bellowing horn sounds, echoing out across the island. The limits of our contest area are set to periodically shrink until there's barely any room left, forcing the contestants to eventually battle our handsomeness head to head. Oh my god, this is a piece of work. I gather the resources and handsome attire that this unicorn left behind, and then begin my trek to the next part of the island. Crouched behind a rock, my breathing heavy... My, crouching behind a rock, my breathing heavy, I glance down at the device on my wrist. Every contestant being equipped with a monitor allows them to see how many others are left on the island, and right now mine is displaying a number that I never thought I'd see. There are only two of us remaining. I peer up over the rock pile and see that no further than 20 yards away from me, another warrior has done the same. I have no doubt that I could take him, decked out in the most handsome attire imaginable, but as we lock eyes across this field, I can't help but find myself hit with a brief flash of recognition. I feel as though I've seen this Bigfoot before. Suddenly it hits me. The only player left of me and my friend Renton from the bus. Looks like those glasses worked out pretty well for you, the handsome Bigfoot calls over. I'm trying to keep my head in the game, but I can't keep can't help smiling as he says this. Yeah, they really did, I shout over to Renton. Saved me right at the top of, top of the contest, actually. Good, good, the handsome Bigfoot bellows in return. So we're going to do this on what? I hesitate. I don't know. You don't know, Renton calls back? The last man standing wins. What is there to know? I just really appreciate what you did for me, I yelled to the Bigfoot. It feels wrong to send you off the island. I wish we could both be winners. Only one winner, Renton reminds me. Those are the rules. Then I'm forfeiting. I call over to the handsome muscular Bigfoot. I'm going to take off all these handsome clothes so I lose no matter what. Oh no you don't, Renton cries. If you take off your gear then I'm taking off my gear too. Watch me, I yell in response. Immediately I begin to strip out of my cool, fashionable clothes. Tossing them to the side as prepared to forfeit the game. I've had a good match, and of course I need the money, but I've also got confident that I'll make it this far next time around. To do this good on my first game is astounding, so it can only be up from here. Soon enough I'm completely nude behind the rock, all of my gear and clothing scattered across the grass before me. Okay, I'm heading over, I call. I stand up and begin to walk over to Renton's hiding place, but I only make it a few feet before stopping abruptly in my tracks. There before me is the same muscular Bigfoot from the bus, 
Only this time he's stark naked as I am. Immediately, we both start laughing. I guess neither of us are using our handsome gear now. Guess not, Renson replies, shaking his head in amusement. I can't help but notice just how incredibly well hung this handsome Bigfoot really is. His cock is utterly enormous, semi-hard and twitching to life as we stand facing one another. I'd be embarrassed, but it looks like we're in the same boat, Renson observes, nodding towards my quickly swelling dick. There's no denying the potent attraction that simmers between us now, but the real question is what to do about it. I'm not going to let you forfeit, Renson tells me. Yo, Reese! Um... So... Very quick statement, I was streaming on Dead by Daylight, then this beautiful person here called Dokster105, um, uh, he, I was playing against someone that he was watching, he subbed to my channel, and then, to, in a bid to stop me from streaming, and to make dinner for me and my partner, he said, how many subs would it take for you to continue the stream so you don't have to cook, and he gifted me over 50 subs. And the premise was, I instead of ending the stream, I would order takeaway and read a Chuck Tingle book. 50 Pog. Yeah, definitely Pog indeed. It's absolutely mind-boggling to me. So here I am, um, I 42 minutes into reading Chuck Tingle books. You've come uh, during Butt Night Bottle Royale, and you're welcome to stay, man. But I'm... No, Danny DeVito! But I want to finish this book before my partner gets back and she walks into me and Danny DeVito reading it. This is second monitor material for sure. Um, yeah, this is second monitor material. You're on my main one right now. No, no, this is staying on the main monitor. This is for those that can't hear me and just appear apparently tuned in as well. I need to drink more. <laughs> I'm going to continue to do this. Yeah, you missed the first book, but luckily for you, this is all being recorded to go on YouTube later. But I I must continue. I must continue the book. <sighs> Renton observes, nodding towards my quickly swelling dick. There's no denying the potent attraction that simmers between us now, but the real question is what to do about it. I'm not going to let you forfeit, Renton tells me. Likewise, I reply, Renton nods. So I guess we're just going to wait this out until we're both disqualified, huh? Looks like it, I retort confidently. The two of us stand in silence now, just taking taking one another in. Our cocks are fully engorged, a blatant symbol of our internal desires that will have elevated to a raging boil. What do you want to do to pass the time? I finally ask, my voice trembling. The muscular Bigfoot doesn't say anything. Just steps forward slowly, closer and closer until our bodies are pressed up against one another. <laughs> I've got some ideas, the beautiful muscular creature says, his deep voice rumbling through his chest. Suddenly, the tension breaks and the two of us begin to kiss each other passionately, our hands roaming their way across the muscular topography of our bodies. It's not long before my attention begins to move lower and lower, and eventually I find myself wrapping my fingers tightly around the handsome Bigfoot's enormous shaft. Renton lets out a satisfied groan as I envelop him with my tight grip, slowly stroking his length as the Bigfoot begins to rock his hips in time with my movements. Faster and faster we go until I'm beating him off with the rapt enthusiasm. I drop down to my knees and stare up at the glorious, ugh, the gorgeous hairy figure cradling his balls with one hand while I service him with the other. Soon enough, my lust gets the best of me and I open my mouth wide, swallowing Renton's giant dick between my lips. I bob my head up and down his shaft in a series of slow but confident movements, building speed as I go until eventually I'm belligerently jackhammering my face across the Bigfoot's enormous member. If my students find this, I am fucked. Yeah, Reese is uh, student services coordinator manager. I'm going to have to post this on YouTube as a private link video. So if you want this, I will send this to you privately. But this is not staying as a public video. <laughs> I've, I've been given a decent amount of money to do this. And honestly... 
Uh, so Reese Gaming is a student service coordinator. He's one of the managers at EF, the school I work at. Hopefully, he will not be telling Cassie or Britta or Philippa about this. <laughs> because those are the three people that can get me fired. Reese can also get me fired, but I'm hoping he won't. Reese, why did you have to tune in? You could have tuned in any other stream and it would have been fine. There would have been context. No, Val. No, Val's my fave. Awesome. Cool. I'm not getting fired. I hope. Also, I guess I'll see you this summer then because I finished my interview with Cassie a few days ago. So I've just got to send off my paperwork. Um, after a good while of this, I push myself down as deep as I can possibly muster and hold steady. Renton's dick is now firmly planted into the absolute depths of my throat. Plunged well past my gag reflex, it cuts off my air supply. The massive Bigfoot takes control, and I submit to him, gladly, as he places his enormous hand against the back of my head, holding me in this position while he savors the beautiful moment of being fully consumed. Deep throat pog. <laughs> Deep throat pog. What? Ugh. Eventually, I pull back with a massive gas, spit flying everywhere. I'm utterly belligerent with arousal now, my mind consumed with the most depraved thoughts possible. I want to give myself over to this handsome Bigfoot completely, mind, body, and soul. Fuck me, I demand, standing up and turning around so that I'm bent over the nearby pile of rocks. Shove that giant Bigfoot dick of yours up this tight asshole. My partner just got home. I can hear the door opening. I'm going to go say hi to her and just make sure she's okay very quickly. And then I'm going to come back and start reading from that right paragraph. Because I'm absolute... I'll say it louder. She's got to be in here while I read this. She's very hungry. I should have ordered Chinese to be here already. Um, but my phone is there. I'm going to get through this book. Then I'm going to order her Chinese, eat it with her, and then come back. Renton doesn't need to be told twice, saddling up behind me and brandishing his thick rod. I reach back and slap my ass cheeks, then hold myself open for his incoming shaft. When the handsome Bigfoot's cock slips deep inside my asshole, I let out a startled gasp, begging for his dick, but clearly not quite ready to accept the reality of Renton's size. While taking the well-hung Sasquatch in my mouth had no easy task, this time the penetration is much more difficult. I could feel my asshole struggling to expand around Renton's girth, completely maxed out and pulled taut as the handsome Bigfoot begins to pump within me. The start, he starts slowly at first, allowing my body a chance to adjust to the brutal penetration. Fortunately, this patience seems to work, and the longer Renton spends warming me up, the more my internal discomfort slowly slips away to reveal the pleasant ache underneath. Soon enough, every slam against my backside causes a wave of pleasure to pulse through me, spilling out across my body as in surge after blissful surge. I reach down between my legs and grasp a hold of my hanging dick, Stroking myself off with one hand while the handsome Bigfoot continues to plough me with a breathtaking confidence. The sensation is incredible. The deep simulation of my prostate mixing with the beautiful sensitivity of my throbbing cock. I quickly find a rhythm beating myself in time with his pummeling of my asshole. Let the man eat with his very same partner. You have to explain to your partner this whole situation. Replies, yeah, sure, whatever. That's just, that's just probably the one. True, true. Oh my fucking god, I cry out, my eyes rolling back into my head. I'm so fucking close. Keep fucking me just like that so I can blow this fucking load. 
do it, Renton commands, elevating his speed into a furious jackhammer of cock. My eyes roll back into my head as my body begins to quake spastically. I'm hovering right on the edge of climax, ready to tip over, but pulling back at the last second until finally the eruption of orgasm spills through me in all of its potent glory. I throw my head back and let out a guttural howl, completely overwhelmed with pleasure as ropes of pearly jizz explode from the head of my shaft. The cum spatters everywhere, covering the rocks below me with a hot white pattern of spunk. I've got to agree. Some of I sh some of this is quite poetic work. <sighs> Behind me, Renton suddenly pushes deeper within my asshole and holds tightly, letting out a frantic cry of his own as an explosion of semen erupts from his rod. I can feel pump after pump of muscular Bigfoot's cum filling me up. So much jizz that it eventually comes squirting out from the sides of my ass and running down my legs in a thick streaks. Oh fuck, Renton moans. You win. No, you win. I reply with a smile. The Bigfoot slides his gigantic cock out of my asshole, spilling his seed everywhere. Suddenly, this bellowing silence, echoing out once more across the island, looks like it's done so many times before, the boundaries of my area closing in even more, limiting in a circle of a ten-yard radius and containing nothing more than me, Renton, and a pile of rocks. Suddenly, the circle is what appears to be a transluting, glistening wall of blue light, shimmering fantastically as it swirls around me. Not much time left, Renton reminds me. Only one of us is going to make it. I let out a long sigh, finally accepting my handsome Bigfoot lover is in fact correct. The rules of this game have been set in stone for a long, long time. The stipulation of a singular winner is not something I expect to change anytime soon. But what if, instead of both trying to win, we both try to lose? I take the handsome Bigfoot hand and mine, and slowly walk over to the edge of the circle. What are you doing, Renton questions. We'll walk through together, I inform him. There's going to be a split second, I'm sure, but it's a coin flip which one of us will come on top. I already came on top, the handsome Bigfoot jokes. But that's not the point. I like your plan, let's do it. Me and Renton stand with the tips of our toes scooted right up against the edge of the energy wall. We count down from five, and when the finally hits zero, we both make our giant leap. The next thing I know, I'm standing in the middle of my living room at home, completely dumbfounded by this sudden change in setting. I hold my breath, waiting for some kind of fanfare to erupt as they announce me as the winner of a million credits. But the fanfare never comes. I lost. This is exactly what I was hoping for, but now it's actually happened. I can't help but be a little disappointed. Now that I'm standing in the living room of my dilapidated home, back to life of financial squalor, I'm forced to confront the reality of just how much that money would have meant to me. Not knowing what else to do, I walk over to the fridge and pat a large shock carton of chocolate milk, pouring myself a tall, tall glass and then taking a long, long sip. My mind begins to plan ahead, considering just how early I need to get up tomorrow to start looking for another job. <laughs> Suddenly, there's a series of loud honks from outside. I head over to my front door in confusion, throwing it open and stepping out onto the porch. Hey there, calls Renton, the handsome Bigfoot waving at me from the front seat of his brand new sports car. What are you doing here? I cry, a cry, thrilled to see my friend again. Bringing over your half, Renton replies. My eyes narrow, a bit in confusion, trying to understand what my muscular Bigfoot lover is trying to say. My half? Renton reaches over to the seat next to him and lifts up a large burlap sack. There's half a million credits in there with your name on them, he calls out. A deal's a deal. Oh my god, I stammer, completely blown away by the generosity and sportsmanship of this handsome Sasquatch. Come on, Renton says with a smile. Let's go for a ride. Oh, and it's the rest of Chuck Dingle's books on the past few pages. There are so many! Oh my god. Okay. That was um, Chuck Tingle's Pounded in the Butt by the Sentient Manifestation of my Twitch stream. <laughs> Box stream. I'm going to end the stream very quickly. I'll probably be back in like an hour. Where's all of your emotes? I need to make more of them now. And I will be making more of them. Um, I'll be back in like an hour or so after I get her some food because she really wants some food. And then I'll probably continue to play some video games. If you come back, that's awesome. If not, it's been absolutely amazing. I hope you all have, like, I'll be gone, brother. I hope you all have an amazing day. And, like, honestly, can't thank you enough. Um, Dugster, you are beyond, like, a god for doing what you've done. And I'll be sending this to you in a bit. I love you all, and I'll see you all.